Hey guys, it's been a while, but I've got a lot of fun things to update you on. Um, one thing that I have learned since being here on the new homestead is that this is nowhere near what my last house was in terms of just anything. I mean, we're not in Kansas anymore. There's so many things to get used to here. You know, this winter we had frost, like decent frost and I've never had that before. The summers here are going to be much hotter than where we were before and uh, you know that's going to take some preparedness for the vegetable garden, for the animals, but it's just things that I'm going to have to get used to. One of the biggest things that I've had to deal with so far is pests. Um, animal pests for one. You know at my last house we had rats which were super annoying. I hate to say it but I, I would almost rather have the rats because they were just they were easier to trap and take care of. Here I haven't seen any evidence of rats. I'm sure there are some somewhere, but uh, gophers have been a big deal. And I've been trapping them, but it seems like when I trap one, two more pop up. Rabbits, who at this point are too cute to trap, they've been causing me some problems. I'm going to show you the vegetable garden where I just finished. Um, just finished some rabbit fencing. If you follow me on Next Level Gardening, you know I had some issues with the compost in this area, which has pushed my garden super late. Um, however, I've got some beans that actually made it through the salty compost. Let me flip the camera around here. So you can see they're, they're actually coming out of that salt injury and are doing pretty well. And I also had some down here, except the rabbits have either gnawed them off completely or just bit them down to stubs like this. So, last couple days I've spent installing some rabbit fencing. Um, you, you probably can't see it, it's almost invisible. I got some black chicken wire. Now we had put rabbit fencing in the fall over around the fall garden and that was just two foot high fencing with chicken wire silver so it did show up a little bit more it did shine in the sunshine a little bit more and i wanted it a little more invisible here so i'm going to go up to the top and kind of show you how i did this um it was super simple and so far it's worked um keeping an eye on things but i did see some rabbits trying to find a way in and they couldn't so i started up here at the top with the two tomato beds and uh, just around these, this area, I put just the T-post that I used over in the fall garden and then this black coated chicken wire. For the rest of the garden, I used these tree stakes. Uh, they're about an inch and a half, two inches in diameter, eight feet tall, pounded them about two inches into the ground. And I put them all around the perimeter of the garden. Now on this side, I've got the wire all the way down covering every single uh, piece. On the other side, I didn't need to do that where it went, where it comes in. So it starts here with the wire, goes along, and then it ends because the rabbits aren't gonna be able to jump up, at least our rabbits. I know when I put up the last fence for rabbits and it was two feet tall, a lot of people said they're gonna be able to jump that. I don't know what part of the country you live in, what kind of big rabbits you've got, but we have little cottontail rabbits. They apparently don't jump too high because they never did get into that, that garden over there. So I'm hoping that's the same here and these walls are two and a half feet tall. So I didn't need it right there because the wall, and then I started it again and then took it all the way around. So that's really the only area that's not covered. I also left these poles tall because just in case I have a need for higher fencing, I'm not gonna cut them off just yet until I know for sure that these this height will keep the rabbits out. I'm not gonna make you wait any longer to see the chicken coop. Um, the chickens as of last week are in there. Uh, all of them but the three originals, and I'll tell you why in a minute, and the two little baby chicks that we got um, just a couple of weeks ago. So let me show you the what the chicken coop looks like on the outside. When you see it, you're going to think, well, how, <laughs> how are you putting them in there? It's not done. So here's what we've got so far. Now, right now, it looks like a 
you know, Wild West ghost town with the shiplap here on the sides. I use this shiplap because this was actually salvaged. This is repurposed, as if you couldn't tell, from our old patio cover when I redid it. I kept this wood. It's still good wood. And this is all going to be covered with plaster or stucco. If you've used both of those before, let me know which one is easier because I could go either way. I want to choose the easier one. Okay, so where you see this here, this is going to be an English cottage, as you know if you've been following me. Where this is cut out here and you just see the plywood, that's where the chimney is going to go. And that'll go up, you know, quite a bit taller than the roof. The dormer is in place. There's going to be a gable over this window right there. And then this gable here is too low. I need the angle, the, the pitch of this angle to be higher. So I'm going to redo that. Now, just a disclaimer. Um, anyone that has any kind of construction experience is going to probably look around here and see plenty of mistakes, plenty of uh, tips or signs that I, I'm really not a builder because I'm not. But you have to remember, this is a chicken coop. I built my last chicken coop and gazebo on the fly without any experience. It's still, they're both still standing as far as I know. This is not a house where people are going to live. It's a chicken coop and a storage shed and place for the rabbits. So, yes, there are things that are probably not how you would build a house, but it's not a house. Okay, you might be able to hear the chickens. Uh, we're going to go in here. i got to give them their food, and um, I'll show you kind of how things are laid out. So when you come in the front door, there will be a long rabbit hutch along the back wall for our rabbits. Uh, this wall on the back is going to be wire, so it will be see-through, and I'm going to put some kind of vine, non-toxic vine, on this fence. So it'll really just be a green background. Again, this whole English cottage is a facade, like a movie set, on the outside. Uh, like I said, there's not going to be any real solid back to it. And then the roof, on the back side of the roof, is going to be um, kind of a tinted plastic corrugation so that we can let some light in here but not too much and then the other part of the roof is going to be thatched hopefully i have found a thatch company that um produces fireproof or resistant thatching okay so the rabbit hutch is over here and then on this side we've got the hen house or the coop the inside part of the coop so there's a window here of wire that looks in you can see how much they've grown, if you remember little baby chicks just six to eight weeks ago. Coming around this side, we've got a door. Good morning. <laughs> Coming to say hello, huh? Until I put my hand out. And I've got nothing in my hand right now, huh? Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, let me get you some food. Hang on. So while they're eating, this is going to be their roost area. So I've got one roosting pole back here. I'm gonna put a couple more kind of around the edge. Got their water there. Over here, we're gonna have four nest boxes. I've only got two open right now. The reason is, is because I did initially put the three larger chickens that we brought from our old house. We call them the golden girls. Put them in here with these and they were getting along fine and we went to a feed store and they said you know you really should separate them between the two ages until these ones are big enough to take care of themselves to protect themselves stand up for themselves so i was like okay so we put a fence across in here one of those folding 
kind of pet fences that you can make into a circle or whatever shape you want. And for the first few days, it was great. Neither one of them tried to hop over and switch sides. So things were going well. And then one morning I came out and I opened the door and there was a chicken hanging upside down from that fence. I thought she was dead. Um, apparently the little clasps that hold each panel of that fence together, one of them was gone and it left this little V area and she must have somehow gotten up on top of the fence and gotten her toe caught in that and then fell down and was probably flapping all night to try to get loose. So her toe was pretty mangled. Uh, I thought it was actually coming off. And then when I picked her up and got her out of there, I noticed that her leg was just kind of hanging, just dangling. And I thought, you know, it's either out of the socket, it's broken, something is wrong, and this chicken is may not gonna may not make it. So I put her in a box by herself with some food and water, and after two days, she was starting to stand up on it. Um, and then a couple days later, I think she was in there three, three or four days, um, I was able to bring her out and put her back with the flock. Um, when I did that, oh, and I took the fence out. The next day when I came out, the golden girls were picking on one of these pretty bad. She had blood here. That was the first thing I noticed. Then the feathers on her back I noticed were missing and she had little blood spots all over her back. Obviously the golden girls weren't going to leave these alone. So they are back in their original cage until these can grow up and get a little bit better of, uh, uh, have more of an ability to protect themselves. This one here is my friend. She's the one that was being picked on. And now she comes to me and sits under my, like between my legs, between my feet when I'm squatted down here. Um, she'll eat out of my hand. So yeah, we have a little bit of a bond. Right? We do. Huh, you want me to catch you today? Yeah. I don't have any food. So while we're in here, maybe we should do a roll call of the types of chickens that I have. Um, our goal was for lots of different colored eggs, like an Easter basket full of colored eggs. So these three brown ones right here are Easter eggers. They can lay anywhere from, you know, pink, blue, or light green eggs. Um, these two here are uh, lavender Orpingtons. We had buff Orpingtons at our last house, the big fluffy kind of tannish brown ones. These are the same fluffiness, but this beautiful gray color. This here is called a production blue. What? What? Oh, oh. Okay. Um, hi. Apparently I have more friends than I thought. Please don't poop on me. Say hello. <laughs> this one here is production blue. She's got really beautiful uh, light gray feathers tipped in dark gray, and she lays tan eggs. The lavender Orpingtons lay kind of a, a pinkish tan egg. This one here is a copper Moran. Uh, they lay dark, dark, dark brown eggs with speckles. The other copper Moran that is in the food bowl, she's the one that has the hurt toe, but you couldn't tell it. She's right in there with everybody else. And then these here, uh, what are they called? Uh, cream leg bars. I got two of those. They have little toupees on. They lay blue eggs. I think that's right. Now in the garage, I'll take you over there. We'll see. Um, we bought two more. We went to a chicken expo nearby and we got two olive eggers. So we should pretty much run the gamut in colors once these girls start laying. Uh, before I take you in to show you the olive eggers, I'll show you what I did here with these nest boxes. So uh, these next nest boxes, I was going to buy one that was pre-done, but I had lots of scrap wood. And so basically this was free rather than 200 bucks. These nest boxes are slanted, if you notice. When they lay their eggs, instead of sitting here and getting messy and, and you know, by the next chicken or whatever, they actually roll down the slant and into the slot in the back. 
Now, if we come outside here, you can see we've got a door here. And when you take this door down, now right now there's just a bunch of bubble wrap. I'm gonna figure out a more permanent solution. The eggs roll into this trough and will collect so that we'll never have dirty eggs. Now the few days that we had the big chickens in here, they actually used the nest, nest boxes and they worked as planned. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, over there on the far wall, you'll see that little gray rectangle. That is an automatic door. The motor's not hooked up yet, but let me take you over here and show you what's gonna be happening on this side. That's kind of our next project. Um, you can see down here, the door and that door will automatically open at sunrise and close at sunset or whatever time we pick that is going to allow the chickens to free range out here kind of free range this is going to be a large outdoor enclosure uh, it's going to be enclosed just to protect them from some of the you know aerial predators throughout the day but then at night they can go in and be safe because one thing i didn't mention i wanted this chicken coop because we do have so many predators. We've got coyotes. There were two fighting in the driveway yesterday morning. We've got a weasel that lives right around here somewhere. We've got raccoons. All of those uh, critters that are going to kill your chickens. So the floor right now, it's all wood shavings. Four to six inches. We're using the deep litter method. But if you dig down through here, you're going to hit hardware cloth. So this entire floor and up the walls is all enclosed with hardware cloth so nothing can get in. I also left this opening at the bottom to get good airflow through here. So while my last chicken coop looked great on the outside, uh, it left a lot to be desired inside. I couldn't even stand up. I had to kind of do the duck squat walking through trying to clean it. It was very cramped. This one's gonna have lots of light, lots of room, and in, in addition to looking really amazing. I mean, let's be honest. I built this chicken coop for me and as a backdrop to this whole area here, which will be the English garden. It's only a little bit for the chickens. All right, we're in the garage where the other two baby chicks are. So these are the Olivegers. And they're about two and a half, three weeks old. Probably three weeks old now. And they're doing well. But they still have some time until they can actually get anywhere near that coop. This whole last several months has all been about priorities. Prioritizing projects. And not even whole projects. Prioritizing bits and pieces of projects so that I could get everything done when it needs to be done. You know, the main priority was the vegetable garden, getting those retaining walls in. Now I'm still not done with them. I have enough in where I can begin planting. Then I switched over to the chicken coop so I could get enough done there to get the chickens out of the small boxes they were in and into the coop. That's done. Now, while I would love to finish that English cottage right now, I have to prioritize at this point the rest of the vegetable garden. Um, I have a lot more stone to put in, retaining walls and such, because I have a film crew coming here, a uh, professional film crew in July. And so that really needs to look good. So once that's done, then I can flip my priority back to finishing the entire English cottage. So I'm gonna take you over and show you um, what, I'm, what I still have left to do in the vegetable garden in terms of retaining walls. So first of all, these walls, this one's finished. It's as long as it needs to be. The two up here need to be longer, but because these were all supposed to be lined up this way and instead I varied or zigzagged the design, I liked the design better, but it took the stones that were planned for the end of those walls. Now where those walls end, there's gonna be another wall going this way on each level to kind of contain each area. So this end will be wider. I'll have one more bed on each of the terraces. 
and then there'll be a wall lined up with the edge of the house that comes down and steps down with the terraces. And then on the right side of that wall will be a six foot wide path that comes down this way and there will be stairs there uh, to get you down here to this level. But then on the right side of that, there will be another retaining wall holding up all of this. So about two and a half to three feet tall retaining wall that will also step up with the terraces. So talking about priorities again, Bill came over last week with the tractor again, finished off this bottom terrace here. Now this terrace will go to where these fruit trees are. These fruit trees will be moved and there'll be the retaining wall will go right along there. So this will be filled in and then it will go all the way back to that here. This is going to be our formal gardens, kind of English, uh, English formal, French inspired. There's going to be three terraces here as well, larger terraces than back here. But I'm not exactly sure what I want to do exactly kind of the layout of everything and because we got the chicken coop going and it should be done you know within the next couple three months maybe um, I really decided to switch my focus and my priority from this area here to the entire area around the cottage to really give you that uh, traditional English cottage garden um, I do plan on starting this probably in November, December. This will be my winter project. But this year, I'm going to take advantage of all this flat space I have, because that is at a premium here. And I'm going to grow all of my pumpkins, and I've got tons of different kinds, colors, shapes, sizes, uh, pumpkins and squash, and corn. I'm going to grow all that here in this big flat area so that I don't have to take up space in the other garden, and I can make the use of this space and actually get the soil working um, out here. I'm not going to build raised beds. I'm just going to put compost down and wire because of the gophers and just let things go crazy there. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that update. I'm sorry it's been so long. I will definitely make sure it's not this long before the next video. In fact, the, the next video is already planned. We uh, had a really great harvest of cabbage just in our small fall beds out here. Um, so I'm going to show you that harvest and then I'm going to show you how to make um, sauerkraut, one of my favorite fermented foods, out of that harvest. So I hope you join me for that. Of course, you know, I hope you're all following me over at Next Level Gardening. I am keeping up with that channel a little better. There's so much activity going on right now in the gardening world. Um, hope all of you are doing great. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you next time.